Hi, this is Delene with McDonald's Sewing and Vacuum, and we're going to do an owner's class today on the Husqvarna Viking H-Class E20 machine. This is a nice, lightweight, simple machine for those of you who want to mainly do utility sewing and darning and that mending and that kind of thing. So let me show you how to thread it. Um, I'm going to put the spool of thread here. Actually, and before I thread it, I'm going to show you how to wind a bobbin since I'm up here. Uh, this knob right here is where you run the thread to wind a bobbin, and then it crosses over itself, and you put the thread into the bobbin. I like to go in through the center of the bobbin and out one of the holes on the top. If I can get that in there. <laughs> there we go. And then the bobbin fits down on top of the spool pin there, and, or the bobbin pin. And then you move the bobbin to the right. I'm going to hold on to the thread so that it doesn't come out. And once I've wound a couple of um, rounds onto the bobbin, I trim that thread, and I go ahead and finish winding the bobbin. Uh, you do have to stop it yourself. It won't stop automatically. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and stop right there because I've already wound a bobbin that we're going to use. I'm just going to leave it there because it's not going to get in our way. Now I'm going to show you how to thread it. So the spool goes here, the thread spool. You're going to bring your thread up under this guide here. We don't use the knob to thread it. And then you want to make sure the most important thing when you're threading the machine is when you're threading the top portion, you want to make sure that the foot is up. There are, in most modern machines, there are two tension discs right here in the first slot. And when those tension, when the foot is down, those tension discs are pressed together. It makes it really difficult to get the thread between those discs. When you have the foot up, there's more room and the thread can just slide right between those tension discs. The tension is very important because that's what helps the machine make the loop with the bobbin thread. Now when I get down to this portion of the machine, I'm going to go ahead and drop the foot down, put the foot down with the lever. Um, that's going to, as you can see, now it's harder for me to pull on that thread because it's clamped in between those tension discs and it makes it easier for me to thread the machine. Now I'm going to feed it behind this guide and then there's another guide right here in front of the needle. Oops, so I'm going to feed it through that. This is the needle threader, so I'm going to push this little piece of plastic all the way down until this metal part wraps around the needle. There's a tiny little hook in, in this part that goes through the eye of the needle, and uh, it's going to be what actually pulls the thread through to the back. So I'm going to wrap it around this guide on the threader, and then it may be a little difficult to see, but there is a gap between the metal parts right here. And so I'm going to put my thread right through that. Now I'm going to lightly hold on to the thread with my right hand and lift up with my left hand. And the threader throws, pulls a loop up through the needle that I want to pull, not from the front, but to the back. Um, if I pulled it out through the front, it would unthread the needle and I'd have to thread it again. Most of the time, you're going to want to put your foot or your thread through the foot of the machine and pull it towards the back. You'll have less trouble if you do that. Okay, so I've got it threaded. Now we need to put the bobbin in. We wound a bobbin up here. So this machine has a little case that fits right on the front. I'm just going to grab it and pull to the left. And in this, by the way, you can store your extra parts and pieces. Uh, but I'm going to set it aside for a minute. And down here is where your bobbin lives. <laughs> so there's a little door that you can pull down right here. This is the bobbin case. This is the bobbin uh, right here and the uh, tension in the case for the bobbin. So I'm going to put my bobbin into the case with the thread going uh, clockwise or make it look like a nine. That's kind of how I think of it. Um, so you're going to put that 
bobbin into the case. I'm going to pull it up through this little uh, gap in the bobbin case and then into the tension. You need to make sure you hear it click in or feel it click into that tension there. Again, that's the most important, one of the most important things in um, putting in a side loading bobbin like this one. Now the next thing I need to do is fit it into the bobbin assembly down here and you may or may not be able to see it, but right up here at the top there is a gap and actually I'm going to show that to you. I'm going to, normally you wouldn't need to do this, but I'm going to pull this assembly out so that you can see that there's a, a little indentation there. Now I'm going to put it, and if you ever need to get in and clean your machine, this is the way to do it. Pull all the pieces out. Use, um, we use Q-tips and rubbing alcohol because the rubbing alcohol dries quickly. I, we do not recommend ever using canned air inside your machine because it can go places that we can't get to. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna put this back in and it just slips in right there. It kind of clicked into place and these little handles right here come right back up in front of it. So I've got um, my bobbin in the case. You wanna make sure you get it the thread in between that gap and into the bobbin case um, and you want to make sure that you hear it click into that bobbin tension right there. Now I'm going to take it and hang on to it and I'm going to take this hook right here and make sure that goes into the gap in that metal piece right there. There you go and when you hear it click in like that it's, it's, already, it's loaded. Now I can let this drawer door go closed. The next thing I'm going to do is hold on to my top thread, needle thread, and I'm going to use the hand wheel and turn the hand wheel on the right toward me so that I can pull the bobbin thread up to the top. Um, that's another really important thing in loading a bobbin on this type of machine. All right, now I'm going to take my little case <clears throat> and put it back on. <clears throat> By the way, <clears throat> when you have it off, this makes a nice free arm for sleeves and smaller tubes, tube-like things you might need to sew. All right, so I'm going to put the tray back on, and we're ready to sew. So the first thing I'm going to sew, show you how to sew is a straight stitch. <clears throat> the top stitches are for woven fabrics. The bottom stitches that have the S underneath them are for stretchy fabrics. And I'll show you how to make that choice um, in a few minutes. Okay, so we're going to start with a straight stitch, which is stitch A. The selector knob for the stitches is over here on the right. It's underneath the hand wheel for the needle. Uh, right below it is the stitch selector. <clears throat> so I've selected A, got my thread ready to go. The stitch length that uh, is recommended usually by Viking for a straight stitch on woven fabric is 2.5, so we're right in there, 2.5. To make a straight stitch, you need to select zero on the stitch width, and then this is the uh, tension. This is what um, balances the tension, uh, the stitch between the bobbin thread and the top thread, and basically you don't want to see the top the bottom thread on the top and you don't want to see the top thread on the bottom. So you can adjust this if necessary. Um, most of the time though we're going to leave it right around uh, where it is at the moment. Okay, so next thing is to sew, I'm going to put my fabric under the foot, lower the foot uh, down with the knob or with the lever, and then using the foot control I'm going to just start sewing. On this machine Reverse is this big button right here, so when I, if I need to go in reverse, I just push that down and I go back and then when I let go, it immediately starts going forward again. Okay, and let's say I want to finish it at the end. Okay, now I'm going to turn the hand wheel until the needle's up, pick up the fabric or the foot and take the fabric out and there's a little cutter on the side of the machine that you can use and it just makes a really beautiful stitch. Now another thing I want to show you uh, about when you're in straight stitch mode, you can 
um, move the needle position if you need to. All right, so I'm gonna sew in the center needle position. Now I need to stop with the needle up, and if it's not up, I can use the hand wheel to make sure that it is. To change my needle position, I am going to use the stitch width, and I can. it's only gonna go left, but I can uh, move it in increments from the right from the center position all the way over to the left at number five. And let's show you, we can have several different stitch positions there as I change the stitch width and then back all the way to the center. And there we go. So you can see that you can make nice little adjustments as you need to if you're sewing on a garment or quilting or anything and you just need to move your needle over a little bit. The next thing I'm going to show you is uh, a little bit of a knit. Um, this is a really lightweight Trico knit and it can be really kind of difficult to sew on. Um, but this machine does a lovely job of that. I'm going to this time select the B stitch which is the zigzag stitch. But, and I'm not going to use actually one of the straight stitches down here. So I'm going to take that wheel on the side and select stitch B. Now I would like for my zigzag to be kind of narrow um, and a fairly long stitch. I'm going to go between three and four there. Now I'm going to fold this up as if I were going to make a little hem in, in a trico nightgown or something like that. And what it's going to do is sew a slight zigzag for me. And I don't have to push or pull this fabric through. You don't want to do that. That can contribute to breaking needles and that kind of thing. And so I'm going to cut my thread off. And now I've got a nice stretchy, slightly stretchy, um, hem there so that my stitches won't pop. Um, the next thing I'm going to show you is how to sew on some heavyweight fabrics like denim. This is a nice heavy denim um, and I'm going to go back to the straight stitch because I want to stitch a straight stitch so that's stitch A. I'm going to actually leave my stitch length around 3.5 and then to get a straight stitch I have to go back on the width and set that to zero again. Tension should be fine. The only other thing you might need to change once in a while is right on the top of the machine, there is a dial for the presser foot pressure. And what that is, is when you push, put the foot down, it's got a certain amount of pressure that it applies to the fabric. If you've got a light, light fabric like the one I just used or a very heavy weight fabric, sometimes it can help you if you adjust this knob and there are instructions on how to do that in the book but for most of the time and for both of these fabrics I didn't feel the need to do that. Alright so I'm going to make a pretend flat felt seam and I'm going to just put my fabric again under the needle. So most jeans have, a lot of jeans have that seam on the side that we're all kind of familiar with and that's three layers of fabric right there. So I'm going to stitch through that um, no problem. I didn't go exactly straight, but that's okay. I usually don't. And there's my seam. Now that was three layers of denim with no trouble. Now I'm going to try to take it up a notch. So we're going to, if we had to put a, a hem in a pair of jeans for somebody, for example, what we're going to be doing is rolling that hem up. And I've gone from three to six layers here and then from six to nine layers. Every roll gives me another three layers in the middle there. So I'm gonna place the edge of my fabric underneath the needle. I'm gonna do my back stitch and let go. And then I'm gonna keep sewing until the foot really starts to climb in the front. I'm gonna make sure my needle is down all the way. So I'm lowered the needle with the hand wheel. I'm gonna lift the foot up in the back and I'm going to use this multi-purpose multi tool. This is an optional tool uh, that's not, it's very inexpensive and it just makes this so much easier. So I'm going to slide the narrow end of that underneath the foot in the back so that it levels that foot off 
Then remember to put the foot back down. You can't really see a difference, but it's gonna help feed the fabric through. And since that foot is now level, the machine feels like it's not having to work quite so hard. <laughs> so no broken needles. I didn't skip any stitches and I've got a beautiful looking hem on my pair of jeans. All right, the next thing I wanna show you is a little bit more with the knits. This is like sweatshirt material and we're gonna pretend that we're gonna put a cuff, a wrist cuff on a, on a sleeve for a sweatshirt. So I am this time, I'm gonna select the, a stretch, stretch stitch I'm actually gonna go all the way over to the right for the Q stitch here. This is a seam and overlock at the same time. So what it's gonna do is sew my seam for me, but also finish the edge for me at the same time. So I'm gonna change this stitch selector to S. That is uh, what gives you access to these stretch stitches on the bottom. I'm gonna increase the stitch width to about four or five, and I think I can leave my tension the way it is. Then I need to select my stitch, which is the Q stitch, and if I just pull it forward toward me, um, I only have to go two knobs, or two, two clicks over to get to that Q stitch. All right, so I'm gonna line this cuff up with the edge of my sweatshirt fabric put my foot down and I wanna make sure that um, the stitches are gonna go across over the edge of the fabric there. So I'm gonna, I may have to adjust it a little bit to do that. Now, as we go, I'm gonna kind of stretch this fabric out. You can pin this if you want to, but I just, and I think I'm actually, nope, I'm doing okay. I thought maybe I was going off the edge there, almost. All right, so that gives you the idea about that. I'm gonna trim that, and there we go. I've got a nice seam. Actually, I did go off the edge there, so that's no, no horrible thing. I can take a few of those stitches out. They're not too hard to take out, but we've got a nice stretchy seam there. So the next thing I wanna show you, this machine has a wonderful one step buttonhole um, and it's really easy to use. So uh, the first thing we're gonna do is get out of this uh, stretchy mode because I'm gonna be sewing on a woven fabric again. And so I'm gonna move this uh, stitch length knob and I'm gonna put it in the uh, area where the buttonhole shows up. And you can actually adjust the width of the buttonhole uh, by moving the knob so that the <laughs> so that this little gray dot lines up somewhere within that buttonhole. Uh, there's not a huge difference, but you can make some, some difference. All right, I'm gonna keep my stitch a little bit wider, and down here I need to select the buttonhole with my stitch selector. I'm gonna put the uh, buttonhole foot on, but before I do, um, this buttonhole foot has a nice little feature where you can actually put your button right in the foot and clamp it down and that is gonna tell the machine how long to make your buttonhole. And so I'm gonna lift the foot up and push that little button in or that little handle in and my foot is now securely on there. The last thing I need to do to prepare for this is pull this piece down from the top and gently push it backwards so it clicks back like that. Now I'm ready to sew my buttonhole, I th think. Yep, looks like I am. So I'm gonna put my fabric under the needle. Now normally I would mark on my fabric where I want my buttonhole to go, but just so you know, I'm gonna try to stitch it right, right in there. So I'm going to line up my needle with where the end, close end of the buttonhole is gonna be, and it's gonna stitch backwards first. And using the foot control, start sewing. And what it's gonna do is sew backwards first, and then it's gonna do the bar tack and come forward, and when you get to the front, you're done with your foot uh, buttonhole. So I'm gonna lift the needle up, 
pull my buttonhole out and look at that. How easy was that? To do another one, all I have to do is push this little piece back again till it clicks in place, line it up again, um, put the foot down, and start sewing. And it's going to go backwards first. Do the bar tack at the end, come forward, and finish the bar tack in front. Now you can adjust with the stitch width and the stitch length. Uh, you can adjust the width and the density of the buttonholes. Mine are kind of open. But that's, that's all there is to a buttonhole. That's really easy, huh? Okay, so now I'm going to push this lever back up now that I'm done with my buttonholes. And I'm going to press the lever on the back of the foot to release the foot, or on the back of the shaft to release the foot. Take the button out of the buttonhole foot and close that up so it'll fit back in my case. Got one more thing I want to show you today, and that's how to sew a blind hem on this machine. Uh, the foot that we're going to need is this foot, which is uh, an adjustable foot. Um, I'm going to select my stitch again, which on this machine is the C stitch right there. So we're going to stitch, 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 and then the machine's going to reach over and grab a piece of the fold. And that will all make sense here pretty soon. So I'm going to change the stitch selector to C. Okay. Uh, I'm going to change the stitch length back to between uh, two and three. Actually, I think I'm going to go three to four. And I'm going to make that around four, the stitch width. Now, for a blind hem, Oh, and put my foot on. So um, this foot just clamps back on the way the others did. I use the little lever in the back, raise that up, put the bar into the shaft, and then it clamps on and grabs it. Okay. Now, um, this is the right side of my fabric. So to do a blind hem, I'm going to fold my hem up toward the back side. And then I'm going to take and make a fold so that I can sew on the wrong side. And it's going to reach into this fold and grab a piece of the fabric, um, but not have a real big visible hem. So what I'm going to do before I start sewing is I'm going to drop the foot down, line the fold up with that white plastic piece. And then I'm going to bring my needle down just to make sure it's only going to grab a little bit. And I think I'm going to make that stitch a little bit less narrow. Yeah, because I only want it to grab just a tiny bit. You can adjust that with the stitch width, but you can also adjust the foot. I'm going to leave the foot adjusted the way it is. So I'm going to lift this back up, pull my thread to the back so I have enough and I don't unthread my needle again. <laughs> Put the foot down again so this white piece is right up next to my fold and I'm going to start sewing and it's going to reach over and grab a chunk just a little bite of that fold let's see if I can go slowly so you can see it reach over and grab it's going to reach over and grab reach over and again you would probably have need uh, pins in this I tend to do these without pins so that's the back side. Now, when I open that up and flip it to the front, look at that. If I didn't have bright pink thread, you wouldn't even be able to see those stitches. So that's how you do a blind hem on the H-Class E20. You can refer to the manual. They've made a really good manual for this little machine. It's easy to follow and has some great pictures. So for the things that I, what, didn't show you, you can refer to this or feel free to give us a call or come into the store. We'd be happy to help you. Okay, that's all I have to show you on this machine today. Happy sewing.